So the first uh, this uh, the, the first use of this is when it's going to refer to the instance variable. We're going to differentiate uh, the instance variable with a local variable. Now, if we have here, I've declared uh, these three variables, int i, j, and k. I put values here so that you, you're going to be able to see the difference. You have here 10, 20, 30, which are in the parameters. So new thesis, 10, 20, 30. It's going to come here in this parameter. Now, i is equal to this dot i. How will we know if I had put i is equal to i? How would we know that this i is this or this one? So, to remove this ambiguity, this confusion, we're going to use this keyword. If I put here i is equal to this dot i, what does this indicate? Let me show you. The i is equal to this dot i here would mean this dot i. What does it mean? It means here that i is equal to this dot i. This dot i means this local variable here would come here. This means the variable i is equal to 5. Now, because here it's 5, this dot j, this variable, this dot j, would mean this variable j is equal to j. This means this parameter, variable from the parameter. So this dot i means we are referring, referring to the variable within this class. So if I want the value to the value to be taken from the one defined within this class, the global variable here, then five comes to be stored will be stored in i. So this dot i means this. This dot j means the variable declared within this class is equal to j, the one passed in the parameter. So now this dot j j would here we have value of j j the value of j would be what has been passed in the parameters and what has been passed in the parameters is 20. So now see if I'm right. Let's run it. Java C Thesis Demo dot Java Java Thesis Demo So i is equal to this dot i. This dot i means we are referring to the same class variable. This dot j means same class variable, but the value of j is the one coming from the parameters. So this is the first use of this keyword. Here I have written the program. Here we have thesis t is equal to new thesis. I'm creating object, creating object t that's going to work with a constructor which has three parameters. So t, we're going to look for constructor which has three parameters here. So 10, 20, 30. That's going to pass through this. 10, 20, et 30. Now, i is equal to this dot i. This means this dot i. What will happen with this dot i? The value that comes in this class, 5. Here in this uh, constructor, so 5 will be stored to i. j will have a value that has been passed through the parameters, that is 20. And then the k will be equal to 30. Only this dot i, which is going, going to take the local 
variable value i is equal to 5. All right. So t dot disp. I'm going to uh, publish here uh, to print i and j. So i and j would be 5 and 20. So let's see if I'm right. So let's compile the program. Five and twenty. Good. This is for this one. With we are we've done the first one. Now T one is equal to new thesis. So let's go to a constructor with no parameters. So constructor with no parameters is this one. Now what is this constructor doing? It is invoking this constructor. It's going to go on this constructor. So let's, let's see it this way. So this constructor will go and invoke this constructor. Then if there were lines here below, then it would have continued to execute below. So it's going to invoke this constructor. This constructor here will invoke this constructor. So this means it's going to access another constructor with the, this parameter. The parameter must be, it's like this, so it's going to invoke this. This parameter, for integer value, that's why it's invoking this constructor. So it's going to run all this when it enters the constructor. So this is why this keyword, this is the second use of this keyword. It is when it is invoking another constructor. Now let me remind you that constructor is, it has no return type, not even void. And it bears the same name as the class name. So this is the second use of the this keyword. So now the third use of this keyword is to invoke a class method. So now let's see how it's going to invoke class methods. This here. Now, we have here, my object has been created, T1. T1 is calling this function. So, this function is here. It comes here. So, I'm going to do it here. Okay. All right. So, now we have this dot print function. So, T1 is equal to new thesis. It's uh, T1 will be working on this object. And here I have T1.display. T1.display is going to come and execute this method. Now, in this method, value of i, i. That's okay. 5 will be displayed. J15 will be displayed. Now we have this dot print. When we have this dot print within this method, this means it's calling another method. We are calling this method. So when we are calling print, so this will be displayed. We are, this will value of k, then k is 20. So this means within this method, I'm calling another method. But this indicates that the method is within the same class. So we are going to look for print function. That's going, that is within the class thesis. So this is the third use of this keyword. So one, one use is when we are differentiating, we are removing the confusion from an instance variable and a local variable, class variable. Then we have seen when we are invoking another constructor. From one constructor, we can access another constructor, invoke another constructor. Third use, it's when it's calling another method within the same class. 
So these are the three uses of this keyword.